today on this old house. So you're getting ready for clapboard. Exactly, yeah. Now the biggest problem with an old house is what? Well, sometimes they're crooked. They're out of level. They're out of level. Right. And this low-hanging pipe is a menace, but we have a solution. But it's not as easy as you think. Hey there, I'm Kevin O'Connor and welcome back to this old house here in West Roxbury where we are working on this beautiful 1890s Victorian and have a look at the front yard. You can actually see the front of the house for the first time. Jen uh, and her crew took out some large oversized rhododendrons that were right out here in front. They went out back and now you can kind of see what we're working with here. There will be some updates to this front porch and to the front stoop. And then as you wrap around the house, you can see that most of the siding, well, all but this little piece right there, has come off. The house wrap has started to go in and the windows are slowly going in one at a time as well. And out back, even more going on. Out back, the old porch that was here was pretty beat up and rickety. That has been taken off and they changed the entryway to the back of the house as well. So the porch used to come in about to here and then the doorway went in there. So they pulled this forward. This is all now in closed space and in the process, bumped the ceiling up a little bit so it matched with the kitchen. And now they're going to rebuild a porch right here with a bulkhead over on this side and uh, plenty of rot to be found. This whole sill right here was replaced. You can see this sill is new PT right there. That was replaced. No shortage of rot on the house. Hey, Deliandro, Tommy, how are you? Good, Kevin. How are you doing? Good so, morning. rot everywhere. Not surprising, right, Deliandro? Yeah, we found some rotted places in a few spots of the house. Uh, we still have one over there that we, we got to take care of it. And you can see the rafter tails up there that are rotted, but you can really see the damage from the board. That's definitely a sign of water getting in behind the wall because the ants like to be up high, but they also like the areas wet. Gotcha. Okay. And the, the job for this morning, what are you guys working on? We're going to be doing the window cases. Uh, we're going to cut them over here in the same in the front. Gotcha. And your material PVC, right? We're tired of the rot, so we're upgrading. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I mean, today you can use a cellular PVC just like this. This is a one by five, which is basically three quarters of an inch thick. And we're also going to use a PVC window sill. And it's got a, a relief cut in it right there, you can see, which is nice. So when the water drains off, it won't run under from surface tension. And we always want that to drop away. So this is the front window up here. Correct. Gotcha. Right. You say this is close enough to what we've got on the house to... Close enough. I mean, it's better than taking flat stock. A lot of guys will take the flat stock and they'll actually picture frame the window like that. And that's, gotcha. it just doesn't look right because it doesn't look right because it's wrong. Yeah. You okay. Know? So cut here, assemble there. Yes. Yes. Sounds good. Yep. All right. All right, got all the pieces cut. Saw your table set up here earlier when I got up here. It's always nice to have a jig when you're putting pieces together and we got a lot of windows to put together. And the two we're working on right now are these two on the porch? Exactly, yeah. I like your jig here, Tommy. Yeah, makes life a lot easier. So you got a screw here to keep the side casing set off from the end of the uh, sill. Right. And you've also got it nice and flush in the back. That's the idea of it, flush in the back. We put a spacer on it to keep this down the thickness of the sill this way. Yep. We had to put a filler on this. We put a couple of pieces of tape just to fine tune it. And we put a stop here so it will hold it when we screw against it. So now when we hold it even with the edge of the plywood, we put a screw for our overhang, and we now have a, a spacer to go from left to right. Our sill is cut to length. We take our casing that's cut, put it against our filler piece, push it in tight. We have our overhang the same as the other side.
All right, ready to install it and check it? Yep. That dry fit, Leandro. Oh, it looks beautiful. It does look beautiful. I like to take a thin bead of caulking and run it right down here, up both sides, and across the top. All right, now we're ready to place it in around the window. We got the molding. Yeah. So, so this was this is what we had in the house. Yep. Uh, we were trying to match like uh, with some stock item. Uh, this is the closest that we could get. Well, this is close enough. I mean, we have a profile that goes around the window that's similar to what was original, but it's nice to set a window off with the frame detail around the window. It's gonna look good. Yep. All right. You get a little bit of caulking right there at the bottom, and we'll push the molding right into it. There we go. Okay, you can tack that if you want. All right, we'll put some glue on the ends where they miter, meet together. All right, that looks good. Yeah, came out great. And how many more you got to go? Uh, 29 more to go. That's it, huh? Yeah, that's <laughs> how it is. <laughs> good start, looks good. Yeah, what a difference, huh? Yeah, it looks great. Nothing says Boston City Living more than a nice shade tree along the sidewalk. And that's exactly what's missing from our project. The elm tree is that quintessential city tree. But starting in the 1930s, the elm population was decimated by the Dutch elm disease, which is caused by a fungus spread by beetles. Leaves on one or more branches suddenly wilt and drop. Young growing elms may die in a month or so, while the older ones die within a couple years. Some communities are managing the spread of the disease by inspecting the trees and removing dying or dead branches or injecting at-risk trees with fungicides. But the long-term solution to the disease is the development of a disease-resistant cultivar. I'm here in a nursery that has those disease-resistant cultivars and Peter Mezet, the horticulturist, who's going to help me pick a tree out. Hi, hey Jen. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. Let's talk elm trees. Uh, what's your favorite part about them? I really love these trees. They're classic New England. They grow fast. Uh, you used to see them all down Main Street until the Dutch elm disease wiped them out. But now they've introduced cultivars that are disease resistant. Right. In fact, the town of Hopkinton, I planted some about 10 years ago that looked terrific right along Main Street. And they're great on the streets because that vase shape, it just contains its shape really well. Right, right. So, uh, let's have a look. What do you have for me? Well, there's a bunch of them right here. So what should people look for when they're selecting a tree? Anytime you select any tree, you want to make sure that it's a solid root ball. And this right. one is, you can see by moving it around that it's not loose. Right. You also want to make sure that the width of the root ball to be the correct length relative to the diameter of the trunk. Generally, you want the root ball to be about 10 inches for every inch of trunk diameter. And this one fits the bill perfectly. And that's a good point about it not being loose because if this root structure is compromised, then it's not going to take well. Correct. And this is out of season where you don't see leaves right now, but the next thing I would look at is the top. Right. And that the leaves are all healthy. I know this one is. The leaves just fell off recently. I also look at the branch structure. It's nice and well-rounded here. And okay. then I kind of like the next one a little better in my mind because it has a more straight leader going up about 10 feet before you see that crotch. So with shade trees, you want that, that height, especially with elms, you want that V-shape development. Right, and especially if they're gonna be city trees, it, the more vertical and then this vase shape makes it an excellent choice. Correct. Well, you know what? I think this is the one I want then. Can we throw a tag on it? Absolutely, there you go. For me, sold tag. Olmstead would be so proud. Awesome.
some serious progress on this project. What was once a series of small rooms is now this open concept. Hey, Rodrigo. So you have a living room, falls into a dining room right here. Uh, there's a nice big kitchen right here, and it's all been framed. You've got, in the back, you've got a beautiful breakfast nook with morning light coming in. And here in the first floor, they want a full bathroom here and then another bathroom upstairs. So now for us, the challenge is how to get that plumbing into the building. And that provides an opportunity. Let me show you. So our plumber on this job is Fabio. How you doing, my friend? Hey, how's it going? Another ugly basement for us? Like always. <laughs> so we had that old bathroom group right here, full-size stack. You can see the old cast iron right here. Now we've got a new bathroom group right here. And so you say, what do you, what do, you do with this? You know, we could cut it and modify it. We turn it to PVC. Hook it up on the old cast iron, right. but then we have the, the electrical panel right. right there. We want to be away from that. Yes. And the other thing that gets me is that this is a headbanger. Yeah, now, there's definitely. a laundry right over here. So if we don't do something, you're going to be awful for the poor homeowners. So one thing we could do would be to cut this transition to PVC and just offset this horizontal a little bit higher to get it above head height. Yeah, but I think I found a better solution. We can just use the, the joist, who is running this way, and put our drain like this. So look at that. So because the joist runs this way, we can now put it with pitch going back this way towards the main drain above the beam. Yeah. And what's not to love about that? Homer is going to be very happy with you. Well, it'll be great to have all that horizontal piping out of the way. So now our challenge is, by code, we need to have a full-size stack that comes from the basement with pitch, in this case upwards, up through the building and out through the roof. And that poses some challenges. Here's our joist down below right here. And the perfect place was right there, right? Yeah, right in this 2 by 6 wall. But unfortunately, you have the, the staircase header right below it. So what we thought was going with our drain right here. It'll fit right there. Yeah. And that seems easy enough for the pipe anyways, but as soon as we add a fitting, which we will, it gets too fat. So we're going to have to pad one of the walls. Yeah, I already talked to D'Aleandro and he said, since the bathroom is too small, we should pad it on the on kitchen, side kitchen side and pad because the, the kitchen is so large right. and then we have uh, a nice fitting inside the wall. Right. So now we come here, we make this go away, and the piping continues up. And then I see you've drilled for your toilet there on the master bathroom, and that's not good. Not good, because it just landed on the joist. And, uh, so what, either head it off or change the toilet? Yeah. OK, good. OK, so now you introduce a Y, so that lets you go to your branch to that second floor toilet. And now you're going to turn. Uh, you go horizontally, and then that goes up through a closet and out through the roof. It's sort of convoluted, but it's the only way you're going to do it. All right, I hear some banging. Let's go check. All right, the fun part. All right, so this is when we smash this out of here. I love this. All right, cast iron is pretty unique because it's got this property that if you hit it, it will actually smash. So why don't you go, keep going, Raphael. I don't want to slow you down. This is the fun part. Good therapy. Okay, just take it down. Look at that. All right, grab that, guys. Oh, we came not a moment too soon. <laughs> Look at this. So I think this was ready for us. <laughs> All right, so most of that horizontal drain is gone now. We got a ragged edge here, but we need a clean edge to tie onto because we have to make the new work go that way. So in the old days, my grandfather's day it would have been, somebody would have actually taken a cold chisel and tried to hit it with enough force to create a line that would finally snap the pipe. No, no. Guys, bring that fabulous tool in. This is a chain cutter. You can see it's got blades on this chain. Okay, now he's going to, with a ratchet, he's going to create enough torque to actually snap this thing. Keep going, keep going. Look at that. 
perfect clean cut. That's great. So now we've got this adapter. It's got a neoprene gasket, stainless steel bands. And we'll put that down on here. We'll tighten it up. And now we're ready to go. All right, so that's all snugged up. In just a little bit of time, you got this run here perfectly up inside the joist bay. Look at the headroom here. Pick up the first floor, go vertical. All the way up. But look at this. You were clear from the electrical panel, plenty of head height, nothing to bang. We can even put a pool table here. We could. Thanks for your great work, you guys. Awesome. I'll get the beer. All right, so the trim works looking good. Yes, coming out really nice. Windows are looking good. You see you got your water table on and your outside corners. So you're getting ready for clapboards. Exactly, yeah. Now the biggest problem with an old house is what? Well, sometimes they're crooked. Yes. You know, if yeah. not even flo uh, floors, they are not level. So. Exactly. And you took all of your measurements for the windows so they'd be even on the inside or equal off of the floor. Yes, that's right. how it's done. Yeah. Right. So, all right. So now you've got the water table on, and I noticed that we've just tacked it here with a couple of nails so we can see what we have. Yes. You've got it on this line right here, which is a level line. Yep. But to be even off of the windows, it needs to come up to here. So now if we climb the walls with the water table being level and we go up row by row, this siding would hang down about that much, which is too low, all right? That's where we wanna be. So what we're gonna do is you wanna move this up to this line here, and then we can space our siding out equal and we'll end up with the right dimension at the window where it should be. All right, so now we're going to put a piece of flashing in here. It's got to bend up, in, and up the house. So it just sits right on there like that. And we'll just nail it in place with some roofing nails. All right, so now we're going to take some tape and run it across the top edge right here. So if any moisture should get behind it, we want it to run out on the face of it, not behind it. Push that nice and tight. All right, our water table is moved up. And if you remember that space that we had was probably around two and a half inches. So now, because we moved it up, let's measure the distance from the window right here. I have a little bit under 30 inches. What have you got down there, Alejandro? Just under 30 inches. See, so now, because of the distance of the house, if you look at that water table, it looks level, but it's also parallel with the windows. Now we're gonna put a starter strip on. And we don't want the starter strip to lay on the flashing because if this gets wet, that means the siding is sitting in that moisture. So we're going to space it out the thickness of a speed square and that will allow that area to dry and the siding won't get saturated. All right, now we're ready to start laying out for our siding or coursing. So our first row is going to go here, again, slightly off of our drip edge right here, our flashing so it's not sitting in the water and the other one is gonna end up right there. Okay, so what I need to do is I'm gonna create a story pole and I'm gonna take the measurement from here to there, which I know is about 30 inches. So I'm gonna take a stick, I've got a V on the bottom because this is gonna be what I call a swing stick. All right, so I take my tape measure and I measure from the V and we're gonna go, our coursing is gonna be as close to five inches as we can get it. So I wanna take my measurement from the point of my stick and I mark five, 10, 15, 20, because that's the spacing of our clapboards. Now I'll just run a straight line across my reference point. All right, so now that our spacing for our siding is gonna be five inch increments, we need to make sure that it fits in between this and this, all right? So if I place it on here and I look where I am, right up there, it's real close, but I can make that work just by swinging the stick until it drops down. So then I mark a ding mark on the wall and that will divide that row up equally as we go. 
All right, now we get our first row of siding going on. Space it again. Bring it All up. All right. There you go. Got it right here? Yep. All right, now before we put our next piece on to match this piece, I'm going to slide a piece of soft flashing right in here behind the joint. We'll run a little bead of caulking right here, again, so it won't be to the weather, and then we'll just slide it in, and that joint will be watertight. The reason we want to do it is because if this wasn't here and that joint opened up, water will migrate between the joint and run down the sidewall. Bring it down. That's good right there. Right there. Good there? Yep. First course is on. Take it, line it up where I want it, push it tight at the top, mark it. Take my swing stick, put it on the siding. I put, a, I put a point on the end of it because when I swing it, if I swing it and it's on the wrong side, I'll be too high. So I want to put it down, I'll swing it until it hits the line right there. Mark it. And now we'll just run a chalk line from that point down the other end. Put the top on the line. Bring it up, let's see, so I get it on the line. Right there. Lined up with the sill, put it on our mark. And we'll tack it in place. All right, the siding looks good and I like the color. What do you got for us next time? Brick patio going in the back and getting ready for inspections. Oh, great. Well, until next time, I'm Tom Silva. I'm Deleandro Diaz. For this old house. Yeah, it's gonna look good. Move along quick. Yeah. Next time on This Old House, we'll be adding two zones and a heat pump that can find heat even on the coldest day. We use the app and we can see everything that's going on with the system. We're creating a beautiful brick patio that will become a backyard urban retreat. I would call this an urban oasis. And we'll restore the columns and the corbels on this 1898 schoolhouse that will become housing for local veterans.